Hello everyone. Very warm welcome to Think Constructive. I am Isha and this is the seventh session for Python for All series. In this session, I will be talking about input and output functionalities in Python followed by demonstration. So stay connected. Watch the session till the end so that nothing is missed. All right. So let us start with the input and output discussion. Let's first discuss output in Python and then we'll talk about input functionalities. All right. So whenever we need to print anything via Python program on the standard output device, that is our screen. How do we do that? We do that with the help of print statement. All right. So print function print statement is already provided by the by Python. And you can directly use or call this function to print any data on the screen. What is the syntax for that print? Whatever object you would want to print separator and file and flush all these four other options are optional. There are already given and default values for that. If you will not specify any value to the separator or end or file or flush, then these will have their own default values. So default values are written here. So for separator, it's like blank and will by default be having end of line character. File will always be standard output. So whatever you wish to print that will be printed on the standard output device. All right. And then flush will by default be false. So by default, it won't flush anything from the system cache. All right. So here is a small example. Hello world example. I'll show you a couple of more examples in a while. So stay connected. Watch the session till the end. So here are some print examples. I'll quickly now show you the demonstration for this and then we'll start with the input discussion. All right. So I'll suggest you also open the editor and uh, start trying all these things with me. So here is a Python editor. I'm using ideally editor. You can use any editor of your choice. All right. So here I have uh, written some examples of print statement. I'll explain them and then we'll show you the execution. So print with arithmetic operation. So that means inside print statement directly you can put any arithmetic operation. So I have taken an example of plus operation here. So where one is having value 10, where two is having value 11. So I have just put an addition or the plus symbol here and directly the printing. Similarly, I can directly put the addition with the constant or number values here. All right. Then I have taken the example for a string constant and a variable value. So for example, I have taken my var with a Python as an string value and in print statement, I'm putting some constant strings along with this variable string. All right, we'll see how, how it gets printed. Then printing a string constant with a number. So a string constant I have given and the number variable let's say it is having value 7 so let's see what happens here print with the specified separator so by default this SCP has blank value if I wish to specify any particular separator I can do that so here I am using the caret sign as the separator so ideally it should get printed all right and then the next example is for end so by default end always has new line character but if I want to replace it with some other character I can do so 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 I'm giving hash symbol here. All right. So let me uh, now execute this and let us see the results. What am I getting here for the first thing? Where 1, where 2, 10 and 11. So 10 plus 11, 21 I am getting. Print 2 plus 5, 7 I am getting. Next example is teaching my where is fun. So teaching Python is my where value is fun. All right. This is Python session number. My where value is seven. So seven X separated by caret sign and then Y and then X Y with end symbol as hash. All right. So that's how you can play around with the print function. If you want to ask anything else in this, please ask your question in the comment section. All right. Now let's discuss input functionality in Python. So just in case via your program, if you want to take any input from the user, this input statement will be helpful. All right. I will give you the examples and scenarios with respect to different data types. So first I will be talking about a string data type. If you want to take any 
string value from user how do we do that there is a built in function called input and by default it reads data from its standard output and the data type will be string so that is the de default data type of the input function input function will continue to read the input text from the user until user hits the new line all right next important point here is input function always accepts input in the string format that is a default format so the syntax for this will be string variable is equal to input a string so whatever string or constant message you want to print on the screen for users uh, information that message you can print so here is an example in this i am doing minus tr is equal to input what's it what is your name i'll be showing this demonstration in a while all right so we'll move towards another data type so let's say i want to take the user input for integer values how do i do that i will use int function with input that means input should be surrounded by int function like this so on the screen you can see int variable is equal to int then input and then whatever message you want to print on the screen for users information so here is an example for that my int is equal to int input which session number is this i'll show you the demonstration in a while i'll cover two more data types and then we'll start with the demonstration another data type for taking the input from user is float so if i want to input float values how do i do that input should be surrounded by float function all right so this is how we can do it and then how do we do it for the complex input function should be surrounded by complex function like this so here is the syntax and example for that now let's see a demonstration for all these variations of input here is a python editor and let me demonstrate uh, some input functions now let's say i have a variable say my str is equal to i want to input some text i'll give a user friendly message here let's say what are you doing okay enter so the same message is printed here now user is supposed to input some value here okay so let's say user is uh, giving the message i am enjoying python session okay enter value is given by the user and let let's now try to print it okay so i'll just say print my str so this variable ideally should hold this value so i've got that output whatever user has given as an input all right so let's see another demonstration for integer my int is another variable i am taking and input should be surrounded by int function so i'll just say int input and now i will write some user friendly message here okay i close all the brackets enter so now user is prompted to enter the session number let's say session number 7 i am inputting okay now i should be able to get 7 from this variable all right my in 7 that's how i can print it similarly we will have examples for float so let's say my float is equal to float function inside that the input function then some user friendly message let's say what is the temperature for today okay enter so i'll input some float number let's say 32.3 enter and now i should be able to get the same value from my float variable all right similarly we can have an example for complex number I'll just say my complex is equal to complex method should be used method or function so I use it interchangeably. Okay, so I'll just say complex input and some user friendly message. Let's say enter a complex number. Okay, I'll just close everything now and say enter. enter a complex number let's say i am inputting 12 plus 8j because j indicates 
that this is a complex number. All right. So the moment I will just say print my complex. What should I get? The complex number whichever user has given. This is how you can try out different variations of input functions. And whatever doubts or questions you have, please ask them in the comment section. Okay. What all we have covered in this session? We discussed output with the help of print a statement and we discussed input with the help of input in float and complex functions followed by the demonstrations. I hope this session has given you a bit more confidence on the Python programming. Thank you everyone for watching the session till the end. I hope after watching this session you felt a bit more comfortable with the Python programming. Whatever your thoughts are, please leave your thoughts in the comment section below. That will be very, very helpful for everyone. And if you really like the session, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel and share it with more and more people so that everyone will be benefited. Thank you once again. Bye for now.